still having the same, somehow the same yeah. issues yeah. occur as yesterday. No, but now and yours actually, is yours is deactivated, right? So it's it's stopped. So you have to start it. But even when I go to the red button on the 10x platform, somehow it's not started, and my team is still having uh, timeout issues. No, I I think it's like currently like so I I mean maybe just we have to update that that button. I think they are working on it. Mm -hmm. So there should be yeah. one that tells you the state, and the other one should tell you like activated. Because even yeah. if just you activate, it's not. And you have to know it's not fast it's it takes some time so now if I, you just I, can I'm, you go now activate it i can see it therefore just go okay. and activate it then i can tell you just give me a second so i'm uh, clicking on the button right now while i'm speaking to you exactly i, yeah. I did click the button but there is no reaction if, even if i go to my inspect or my console log can, okay i can do you see check. No, yeah okay so Yes, just give me so that I can log in as well. Yes, now it's uh, instant activately successfully. Let me try to message it to it. Yeah, I'm still having the time issue. Time out issues. No, no, yeah, of course, it doesn't start immediately. So oh, okay. you have to know that it takes some time, just like even in Colab, even Colab, does, it's not a big machine, so it can start very quickly. So this one will, will take some time. But so I can see that um, that um, the EC2 instance that was, let's try to quick resource record. Okay. Done. Okay, so now let me just rephrase and see. Yeah, so your now is in the initializing state. So just so that everyone knows that I'm gonna share what happens. Just uh, when you instantiate. So for example, right now, group six, you see my screen. It's initializing, right? So what you receive is basically just that it got now into a running mode. So the instance mm -hmm. has changed, but it still will take some time. So let's say it would take about one minute. So you shouldn't just write there think, but more like, okay, you know, you now initialized. We are going to show now, we're going to add another button that actually you can keep seeing, um, you know, whether it's actually fully, the status is uh, passed and fully initialized. But for now, just think there's going to be about two minutes, uh, one to two minutes where it's actually going to be in this state of initialization. Awesome. Uh, j just, uh, I think it's because, uh, the, yeah, I would agree. It would be appreciated if you guys add something for us to see the progress of our instance, if yeah. it's running or not, because yeah. also that will say, will remove the confusions between us yeah. and you guys. Yeah, I think it's, we just, start, uh, you know, like in the past, we were actually putting time constraint because it's costing a lot of money here uh, that we were actually giving you time like okay between this hour and this hour you can work and then otherwise we will switch it off for now we just implemented this so that we some of the time you want to actually you want to run it like and then even if you are not ssh but maybe using a screen or another methodology you we thought like you want to run the model so that's why we implemented this so it's still buggy in a sense that we don't have everything um sorted out so but know that, for example, if you look at group two, the group two, something mm -hmm. has been running maybe that it has now, um, it probably stopped or they might not be able to log in. So for that reason, I sometimes what I do is just, so that's maybe like if I try to, you know, if I'm trying to SSH to group two, I might not be able to do that now, even if it's running. Um, so let me just try. And the reason is because somehow it's running something and it's too much, maybe, I don't know what happens in there. Like it's an issue with running something or someone is probably running heavy one and there is no RAM, but it's not true usually because it has a lot of RAM. So let me just yes, go yes. back. Sorry to interrupt. I also have a question. Thank you for mentioning out. Is that the resource allocations actually between the teams? Yeah. The, 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 
is it how 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 the resource um it's there is no allocation right now everybody has basically you have to organize coordinate within yourselves so that mm -hmm. it does it you have you know you know you have a you, you do some work but right now it's just everyone has access to everything everyone is even a, an, a, a pseudo that means they are roots they can delete anything but that's why the team it's only just per team so the team has to organize what who does what if you are all training on gpu you can't do that right so it's okay. basically um, you have to organize within the group you know how to do that so for example no, no, my, right, uh, yeah my concern was actually if one of the group for example, the first group actually is using the contents of amount of research. Is that going yeah, to that one impact matter. us? Between okay. groups, it's a very different machine. So each group has a different machine, okay. as you can see it here. And there, that means there's no um, issue. But within a group, that you all have to coordinate among yourselves who, who runs what. OK. okay. Yeah. Good to know. Awesome. Okay. So the then, I, yeah, go on uh if uh, even though the uh, group machine is running i can't still uh, access it it says timeout which which one is that group three yeah group three should be fine uh, so i don't and maybe i'm just gonna check it as well sometimes it's uh, no idea why and uh about the permission uh yeah. like me and Abel are the same group, and I, uh, I go to Abel's di directory and try to create uh, a file or update. I can't do that. It's a permission denied, and I have to be sudo. Yeah, and, uh, of course. Being sudo, sudo for to update somehow is kind of difficult. Yeah, but, it's, but that's the case, right? Yeah. It's like you, you, everybody has a home directory. It's like, you know, like anywhere else you have a home directory and if you want to access another home you have to be sudo okay. uh, that's so why i give so i give access like so you don't have like for example if you know linux you don't have to you don't have to work on your home directory you can work you can create on the root directory one if it's data model and other you can and then make that permission to be global so that normally you can happen. For example, this is just what I'm going to write. Uh, so you can create like as sudo. Um, then, for example, this is data. And I'm um, okay. typing a clear model. Now you can do. Um, that one seven 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 data model like for example with that and anything that is saved in the data and model because now the permission is 777 that means anyone from in that can access so you you don't have to if you work on those directories then everyone can access so that's you don't have to work on your home directory you mean creating these directories uh, at the root uh, level and then oh. giving making them open to everyone and then everyone works in those directories so if you want a common place to work for your data for your model for everything for code for example then you can make it there i see yeah. so it's just yeah and you have to understand the basic of linux this whenever you want a scratch for example jupyter is installed in opt um um so like in that directory you will see because everybody can access Jupyter because of that, or you know, many of the, the resources are installed in a different category, for example, ETC and others. So that's what Linux does. So if you want a common directory to work together, then create one at the root, not at your home directory. Yeah, uh, yeah, Papa, is still timeout issues. Huh? It's still timeout issues. Yeah, so let's see, the cures is now, I think there's something wrong about the even just group two, even if I started, it's not working. And the same is group. Ah, okay, now I understand what it could be. Um, okay. Give me time. So this is group six also. 
I, it's, I will fix it. I think it's maybe um, the main issue with group six and others is that the IPs are changing. And um, so it's not aliasing correctly. I'll fix that. So this is supposed to automatically be okay. So you can now SSH, it should work. And then was that group two as well? Mm, group three. Oh, I think also group four is having issues with the port, as Rodolfo is stating in so the chat. Two. Two, one fifty. Yeah, that's G two is fine. I think that's only just G two is a matter of like some uh, heavy computation. So maybe that I have to restart that one. Um, G four. That is one eighty. Awesome. It's working for us now. Yeah, yeah, I was able to work. Yeah, I think it's a bad issue. Uh, group so. three two. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, no, ours is not working. Fix for us that. So. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will put that. I mean, I think this should be fixed from now on. I think that that one is. Uh, I know the issue. So G four, then G three. Yeah, well, can you fix for group one too? We are okay. having the same. Yeah. Issue. I will. I will. I will do for for all of them. Yeah. Okay. Which one I like now? Is it G three? I'm just showing you so that you know how things operate. Just, you know, that sometimes, uh, okay, so G1. Okay, so then group five as well. Do you have an issue? 36. Um, is there a way that we can know how much we are utilizing the RAM or anything from the terminal? Yeah. From the it, you can do edge top. So, for example, uh, let me just stop my screen. Um, so I, I assume everybody now has their group fixed, at least uh, other than group two, everybody should be able to SSH. Um, so for example, if I now, because I have access to everyone, so I can log into anyone, then if I do HTOP, so HTOP tells me how much memory I have. So everyone has 32 gigabyte of memory in their in their RAM. And now, for example, group four is only at, at, you know getting in megabytes, all right? And then you can see many other things. So you have eight CPUs, so the eight CPUs are here. Okay, and then if you are, um, you just want the, the NVIDIA uh, SMI, which tells you the memories that are used for GPU. So the GPUs has 24 gigabytes and currently used only zero megabyte. So that you would, you would know. And the number of, you know everything that's here you will you will get information yeah does that answer your question yes, yes thank you uh, what about group two do we have to wait uh, yeah it's so i am just gonna stop it and then you can restart it so i think it's uh it's got to do oh uh, So uh, even yeah, when it's stopped, it's of course it's going to be in another state. So, but once it's stopped, you can go and start it, and then um, it should work after that. So, uh, but I of course you know I will start it now from just so that for this one. But in principle, we will fix that one so that now from the ten x, all of this what I did now should be automated and will work. Uh, right. Yeah, Papal, um, does the 
does the API address change every time on set times or what? Which one? Sorry. The API address of the instance. Yeah. So the API address, that's why you don't have to change anything. It's always the same. From your side, it's always the same. The IP changes, but it is we have an automation that actually changes exactly what I did now by hand. It's doing it by so like even um I mean I think it's in the interest of what happens is I can also show you what, what I am what happens here. So here if whenever people are uh pressing that's what it comes here and here is what the api docker looks right so each group is now when they are um starting and mm -hmm. then it basically comes and then it, it does all that <laughs> the start instance right yeah. so okay. now the problem just um, um oh. I'm just a bit afraid that in my occur as what happened now, like the only reason we couldn't be able to access it. So no, I hope fine. you guys have mechanism to handle that part for us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I think that's the case and it should be. Okay. So we, we have a way to fix it. So it will automatically do that. So don't worry. Okay. Um, any other question, uh, Rudolf and Kerot? Yeah. So uh, good morning. Uh, so my question is on the data. I tried to read the issue last night. Yeah. So is there any updates? Uh, there isn't, unfortunately. I think it's uh, how much. How much. Uh, have we got so far? I mean, I think uh, uh, Nati can tell us how much of the data are able to be so far by any group, uh, the total one. Do we have a data, Nati? Like, do we know how many of them are? Uh, yeah, we had, we, we actually talk, talked about this on the morning stand up, and I don't think any group have found any ads, relevant ads. They're just announcements. Okay. So then, Nati, what's your opinion? Um, okay, for which channel? Uh, the Tigva one, actually. We, we just okay. worked on the Tigva Ah, okay. For Tigva, I think, uh, for now, let's, let's focus on, uh, while you are searching, uh, Tigva has uh, four slots of ads per day. And so try to look for ads that uh, in most recent uh, records so, for example we have records until january uh 12th of 2024 so you, it's better for you guys to look for a recent one so i think uh while you you guys are uh looking for a data i i know you it, it's it's somehow part, message ids are uh, partitioned so partitioned i mean like some of you guys uh, are searching for uh message data up to a certain range so for now you, you can actually look for uh, all, of, all of the groups I, I suggest you look for a most recent one so for example try to look for a uh, recent update so for example you can look for uh, data that are in January 10th and try to find a pattern especially in time uh, where the ads will be located so so it's better if you guys are uh, yeah. divided by day uh, other than uh, message IDs too. So for example, like, I think uh, we have six groups, right? So uh, yeah, uh, let's just use uh, the last the last year as an entry. Maybe, maybe, maybe just let me. I think what just a summary of what Natanelli is saying is just don't last time we i provided like some division between different groups because we didn't have a labeling platform that takes care of com, you know duplicate work now we don't have that issue so just basically don't don't try to only on that range between one and one fifteen thousand whatever just go and try to just label whatever is there we know that uh, there are ads there so it's just that Unfortunately, the older ones, Tikva, maybe in the first, you know, uh, 30,000 uh, 
uh, ads or in, in, the cert, in the thirty thousand posts, Tikva actually didn't start advertisement. Only in the recent times they actually started. Uh, so we didn't know that, right? So it's not a disappointment. It's basically what Nathaniel is saying: is just don't don't be bounded by that, by that division I gave. Just label whatever without any message ID, and we will try to fix from the back end to provide the labeling from the bottom instead of from. Um, so we will sort it by time so that there is enough. Yeah. Doctor, I, I don't think uh, the problem is that uh, if I didn't start uh, advertising on that time, I think the problem is that Hikva yeah, it, they did it, it. But they did yeah, but we have seen it. We have seen that there are lots of ads still. On the last day, yeah. On yeah, so I mean, not only on the last day, I mean, just, yeah, there are some, and I think that's what I'm uh, probably not asking. How many has been so far found or labeled to be ads? Do you have a, can you find that one quick information? Uh, do we have a, a, a way to know from uh, the back end? Uh, from the results, uh, we can find. Uh, so, but we can actually uh, check uh, whether yeah. it, how, how, how many uh, ads we, yeah. uh, we are trying to scrape. Uh, no, no, but just from the labels ones, from so far, how many are labeled to be ads? Oh, okay. Uh, let me just quickly check. You, you can actually even screen share so that people know um, as well. So I think, Carol, that's the point. That's, I think we think there is enough. It might not be as much we expect, of course, because some of Tikva deletes some, but there is still enough. And, and group two, you can actually now, uh, I'm just fixing. So group two, you can also access now. Yes, it's working now. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, the plan, I think you you can. Um, so, Mikias, I I don't know what like that port is because three six seven one three. Um, And it seems the username is also, I'm not sure what that is, but yeah. Okay, so we plan, and I think this is where um, the quality, so there is there needs to be from whatever you get now, um, we have to summarize our understanding of, you know, what needs to be done uh, today. And later, maybe we can discuss I think my plan is probably to extend the same project, um, combining, generating, uh, collecting even other data to train, now that you have a feeling, and nail the aspect of like, what are the different components that are required? So in your tomorrow's report, it would be very useful to have now, okay, now you have understand, but next week, if we extend this with the same resource, you know, is it something, can we achieve something good? Um, uh, and what would be the possibilities? So within the groups, you guys discuss now, and maybe later in the afternoon that the, there will be like a discussion among all groups, you know, what is the way forward? And if we are given now one week more with similar resources now, we, we can also collect more data uh, from other places, just some Amharic. Can we generate, is there a chance that we can generate something something very creative something very useful so work on it like i mean they let this be this tutorial but for the afternoon tutorial that's what i plan we will have a discussion right so that we can strategize as groups um what will be you know what value will have if we have, if we have one week extension on the same project with 
addressing the business objectives and the learning component and you know you know what do we need what other resources do we need to make um to do something good like in generating a quality art using um, llms okay mubarak okay uh, like the they mentioned on their blogs the one the, that uh, fine-tuned the amharic model they used uh, a translation mechanism so have you tried that one and if you I, did, I, I think you know like gary was trying to just think of english they were not strategists in that sense we are more strategists we want we have a very clear objective it is about generating small creative amharic taglines and um, you know ads so you don't have to have big capability you know it's not a general purpose model that we are training and i think yeah. in within that context rags combined with some fine tuning even with small data i believe there is a, a high chance so now the question is what ha what have you seen so far and how can we improve that i think the strategy just doing on um, the, the generation and uh, fine tuning and um, and just building the rug is, I think, sufficient for now. We don't have to go, but I think in the next week, we can also, some groups can actually plan to investigate that one as well. Uh, I mean, like, uh... What we are facing is uh, not to not getting uh, much ads. So, uh, if we get uh, an English data set that is uh, for an ad, uh, and if we can translate and use it, that was my question to make it specific. Okay. Um... Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mubarak, but how occur how often how how much is the occurrence of that would be in your suggestion? You mean Trans translating translating English ad to Amharic ads? Is, yeah. is that some the occurrence of 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 that? I, I just want to know. We haven't tried it, but mm -hmm. I can't say now. Uh, okay, uh, just to yeah. intervene here. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, the reason that Gary used uh, the translation part is just to get uh, a lot of uh, data corpus. So now we, we want uh, a specific corpus and actually translating that would be so inefficient. And also uh, the machine translation part for English to Amharic is so biased. Also poor. And it's poor and biased so for example if we have uh, uh, a doctor it, it will automatically translate it as a, a, a male it's gender biased uh, it's professional biased so I, I, it's because amharic and some other languages are uh, are considered low represented they have a low representation in the in the language space so for example english has a high representation in the language space so a, a, any translate martial translation algorithm won't fail or won't have that bias but in, in amharic it will have that bias since it's a low represented language so yeah. actually that's another issue so it also will, it, to add, it's to add, as a complicated also to add on you is that i don't know but the way i saw it is that the difference of culture is something that you can get it in english uh, English ad always have a different culture than Amharic ads, um, no matter what we try. It's also, the difference of culture could be concerned. Um, and I view it from that point of view, like uh, something is completely different. But one thing I appreciate that Nanayel bring out is that the bias also is in their core functionality, the bias through a minor language. So Amharic is a minor language. I I'm just concerned about the accuracy of the definition of ads when you compare English ad to Amharic ads as well. The thing is, I mean, I think so we have some issue with uh, the 
TG level. So I'm just restarting, rebooting that as well. And we will know how many, I think we will get enough uh, ads one way or another, like within this weekend, at least there should be, there are different mechanisms where we can get more ads. You know, we can do scraping um, from different places. So that should not be a problem. I, we are also preparing, I think some team is here, just the Akam team is also preparing some briefs. Briefs, basically, they are not available, but we are reconstructing, reverse engineering. What could be the brief for that ad? I think it's it's exactly this, these discussions are nice and everybody should try. So yesterday we tried uh, um, GPT-4. GPT-4 works in labeling the data better. It can identify ads much better so that we can increase our pool of classification at least to 10,000 when once we have and once we identify um so there are i think these you know different strategies people are thinking that's good but let's try them like we'll we'll test them and we'll see if it is acceptable or not but i think i agree there's going to be a lot first is cost wise there's going to be a lot uh, we wanted to do everything first with gpt4 but it would take us you know about two thousand dollars just to do classification you know there's just with even a simple output so um i think it's it's you know we don't know yet the the, the one aspect we don't know yet what works what we know is that it can be done and therefore test them try them you have api key as well you can actually test some things yourself you know um but it's this is exactly the type of discussion we want let's we really are objectively you know we we are very focused about our objective that we don't know yet which methodology would get us there. So every group, exactly like, you know, this discussion, keep it the spirit, the testing, and uh, collectively, we are also going to increase the data, you know. And if you know, or if you have a suggestion to try to increase, you know, where, where, to, where can we get other uh, ads and briefs in Amharic, you know, one part is like this translation, we'll test, you know, keep it flowing. And ultimately, what we would like to write is that, you know, okay, with all this trial that we have attempted, we now explored and we can actually write the state of the art uh, performance of Amharic within, you know, one's access of data. Of course, if you are a government, you have more access. So, but within that state, and I would say that can be written at the end of the second week as a collectively that can be written as either a paper. Of course, you, you should write it as a blog, but then as well reporting on the state of fine tuning, you know, models for Amharic, um, an actual mm -hmm. technical paper. So in a way, this is my, the plan. Let's exactly investigate whatever creativity we have in our group. Let's explore it. And yeah. we don't know yet, bit, you know, what gets us there, but let's use everything. Yeah. And by the end of next week, we will, we'll be better positioned than anyone else, probably because we have as a group, as many groups and as many people, attempted to solve one simple problem. I mean, not simple, uh, one complex so, problem. So, yeah. so, so, give me, uh, sorry, Mubarak. Uh, so, so the next week project will be continue, uh, continuous yes. for this one. Exactly. That's a clear, that's a clear statement. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, awesome. But I, I, I still would like a, a suggestion and discussion later. Um, mm -hmm within the group first discuss it yourself what would you do different what resources would be better um, resources not not ideal resources but things that can be mm -hmm. that can be you know realistic and then let's discuss that so that we have so, a better a better setup for next week okay so so uh, so if that's if actually if you want a clear discussion then most of the team actually did not start fine-tuning due to some technical issues, also data labeling. So it would be appreciated from 10X team if they actually look that into like tomorrow, maybe when we have, a, or we have enough explorations in terms of our output and input. So a Saturday meeting could be fine if the team wants, okay. uh, but if the team also is tired Good. and- I uh, think maybe, 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 maybe tomorrow, yeah, maybe just tomorrow, yeah. It's like at this time, mid midday, yeah. we could plan. Okay, good, great. Uh, I'm thinking like uh, representing an Amharic uh, uh, to a text if we have good transcriber maybe I'm not sure about the name but if we transcribe it we can get more uh, content I guess and if you have 
such a mechanism before. What, what does it mean transcribe? Like, do you uh, mean translate? I don't mean translate. Like, uh, changing Amharic uh, speak to uh, text. Uh, uh, and again, that, that is even more an issue, right? I mean, we have a, a, the, the past, I mean, Nathaniel has worked on that in, in, in past uh, challenge or in past batch. They were doing exactly the Amharic speech to text as well as Swahili speech to text um, part. I don't know how much state of, uh, I mean, we can get those data that they were used, that they used in those cases. I think, but all of them, of course, are very highly concentrated on news and uh, religion. But I think that it's not an issue to get an actual Amharic content is not an issue. We, there is a lot of, you know, if you just search Amharic data, you can get gigabytes of Amharic um, an actual data there. It's not going to be big, but you will find but what you will not find is advertisement related. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I was thinking is uh, like if we can convert Mulu Alamis or uh, uh, Sarawit Press add to Amharic, um, like uh, the voice to the text, uh, can't yeah. we use it? That you can try, you can try, you know, like. Uh, Right now, Slack, actually, if you send an Amharic um, uh, voice, it transcribes for you. And the best I know that transcribes better is Telegram's uh, speech to text. If you just send for someone, um, if you are in a pro, you can actually translate. And because Telegram, the Telegram did um, uh, speech to text because they train probably their model based on their data, and most Ethiopian Amharic speakers actually use Telegram, their translation is probably the best I have seen so far, even better than Google. Um, Lisan is one, and you can you guys can reach to Lisan uh, if they can actually give us some access or even if, even if it's discounted payment. So reach out to them as well. And if you want to use just the uh, OpenAI speech to text you can also try because you have now an uh, uh, api key and test them if it works okay Let me yeah. try. and and if i had access to the telegram model i would try that one because i think their at least is better at least so far i know but try i think it's it's about trying okay alexander okay uh, thank you but, but the issue is raised by you and Nasrallah. Uh, maybe the, this type of project is continued for the next week. Uh, we showed uh, excellent education with discussion among groups and uh, the Tenex team you. Uh, because in the group, there may be a lack of number of resources, including uh, the skill of the group. Uh, and. Uh, any other technical gaps, uh, even though uh, the project is fundamental to us, uh, continuing for the, ne the second week or the next week, we should discuss more. Uh, in our, for example, in our group, we have uh, stacked in labeling. May uh, totally we divide our tasks into data processing team and. Uh, fine tuner team uh, in the data pre-processing team uh, we are uh, faced some challenges um, the challenge arised by a number of uh, our colleagues before uh, so the discussion we expect much more in the second the tomorrow phase or today after We'll make the discussion tomorrow afternoon. And if it needs to be, and if people feel it's six groups probably are a lot, we can, you know, we can, you know, also make it a smaller five groups. We can do that. But yeah, so discuss with your group, come up with a proposal, and we will discuss tomorrow. And you will have a chance now also to summarize and attempt some things. And we will have a discussion tomorrow afternoon, like at this time. Okay, may I remix the group and any other? 
is another solution yeah so that's what i'm saying it's like if you know there are some things i think it's probably better to have smaller groups focused and with more resources than um divided groups so we can think tomorrow just come up with it with a proposal and we'll discuss it thank you so much okay okay carrot and then i will leave and sorry uh nati i took your time go on carrot okay so i just and want Brian, to, okay yeah i just want wanted to have a clear uh, picture because i think we already missed one uh project because of christmas and if you are going to miss uh, the next week project uh, isn't it, isn't that going to affect us because we need the, these projects because they no, are, normally uh, we, we, projects. we plan 10 10 projects in 12 weeks not 12 projects so that means almost always there is uh, there are some projects that are for two weeks so in the past that was the amharic to take uh, the speech to text project which is basically this one is addressing okay okay yeah so okay. so yeah. does that mean we are going to continue work, working on this or are we going yeah. to restart or working on this? no no we are work, we are going to be working on this to make it better to make to address so one of the projects so just making it very clear we don't want just projects right we want something to demonstrate and some has to be like you know in ten academy there are two things whatever you do must be valuable that means it must so many people for example in the past batches they use their work to present in conferences and um you know and we try at least a couple of projects to be presentable in a research community or in anywhere where you are actually proud you achieved something and others you actually try to help a company business objective but you might not finish we, we pass it right and and this then the very other important part is that the diversity of the projects that you have in your portfolio is such that someone an, an employer would look at it and say like okay, this is great i want you know a person who has all this experience so this part is serving the other part where actually you have one thing also you could present in a um, in a any conference probably write a technical paper about it yeah the reason i asked was because uh you mentioned that the resources will could be reallocated like the team uh, the team members could could be anyone so does no, it, no, uh, that, so, yeah it, it's going to be the same that uh, like for example if we divide if we make it five some strongly now currently performing well groups will stay and then so those who are probably struggling will be divided uh, so that to help the, the groups that are that are found oh, to work. Okay, so the number of group is going to be five, not the members. Not the members. Not the oh, members. okay. Yeah. okay. It's so, just uh, reallocating such that we strengthen, you know, groups that are that you know somehow these uh, these things are not about individuals. It's about finding the right, you know, addressing the objective, and then mm -hmm. you know reshuffle the groups such that. You know we have now five groups exploring or four groups exploring more you know and gates somewhere publishable or uh, deliverable than you know six groups not doing it yeah it makes sense it makes sense thank okay. you okay cool Brian. um uh, actually it was it's it's really good like to extend this project because if we're really needing a, an actual product for the earlier projectors we get to rush over things and then we learn those stuffs but we're not delivering the quality which is required in real world so for this being expand, extended is i think the, the right way in any ways my my idea is like i have seen some something which has previously been done like uh, there was an amharic um, a model, a pre-trained model with 45 languages and for Amharic, it, it also includes Amharic and it uses some BBC Amharic data. And then um, one of my friends uh, get to pre to, to fine-tune that model using some existing label data for summarization, which is like there is a text and then the summary of it as label data. And then the actual output was pretty good. And then for hand, some Hansen text data, it gets to summarize it in a really good, good way. In any ways, what I was after afterwards seeing this, what I what's on my mind is like it's gonna be a brute force. It's gonna be a lot of work actually, but 
supervised learning is the best way. You know, we, we all know that, I think, if I'm not wrong, right? So you're going to correct me if I'm wrong. And anyways, so what I'm thinking is, like, let's say what we want is not, we're not searching for a chatbot. We're not searching for to build chat GPT Amharic version. We are just searching for, given some, let's say, uh, campaign data, let's say, the advertiser side and then the telegram the channel sites we we, we are, this those that are, are going to be given when the user requires or the uh, you the admins of adbar uh, wants to generate those advertise advertisement contents they're going to give that data or, or it's going to exist in our database for sure right so if we're going to if we can give it a, which means such supervised data to train it in a way in a way the input is going to be this campaign or telegram data or which is like what we're going to give him in the prompt and the the label actual is going to be the generated what we actually do want. let's say if it is about uh, oh what about it let's say it's about abyssinia bank right so if it's about abyssinia bank and then if it's about something the input is the come some basic basic things so we're going to give it some ideal real promotion text the samaric text this as the value what we want to the level right if we can train it in such a way i believe it can be very very optimized and in a better way that we want it am i right so can we go this way if we have the week yep i mean you can i mean as i said i think you know for me we that's why being multiple groups some groups can't take risk right so absolutely you can advocate for that and try that one with all the resources you have like and that model that you mentioned i don't know which one it is um uh, the one that includes america and if it has to be yes i think it's this is exactly so you have to know this is mid of the training right and this is the only the best chance we have to try to get that um something everyone is transforming from being a trainee of like trying attempting now is your transitioning to like okay um testing so you can take risk and if you propose in tomorrow's discussion think about it maybe convince your groups and then uh, your group can tackle that one yep great i think um that is um, now Nati. You can take over. I hope this is clear. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks, uh, so uh, I'll just uh, show you how to prepare the, a data set for fine tuning. Uh, I will demonstrate the llama part, but you can apply this one, uh, this approach to any uh, to any model uh, you you think uh, will work. And uh, I'll just focus on fine tuning, uh, just preparing the data set part. Okay, I'll just share my screen. Okay, uh, I think the font is fine, right? Oh, I I don't know. Is it visible? No, it's not. Is it? Do you mind if you zoom it a little bit? Sorry. Oh, well, no. yeah. uh, okay, so for now, I will use a uh, Tikva data set and uh, fine tuning for tagline generation. So I'll just show you how from current, from the existing data set, how we come to pay uh, uh, it and do a fine tuning. So basically, we just installed our uh, package so including bits and bytes, data set, transformers, heft, uh, and also uh, side pipe. And, uh, 
So uh, after installing all the packages, we, we will uh, import the needed packages, and uh, after that, uh, I think we we need to. Uh, it's better to actually store your data in uh, Drive uh, because uh, after the okay, since you are working on AWS, you can do it. But if you are doing it uh, in a collab, you should. <coughs> You should uh, store your data in uh, in your drive and just mount your Google Drive using uh, this command. And uh, this command, and after that, you just uh, read the data set. And uh, as you can see, my uh, the Tikva data set, the clean Tikva data set, it's including the hashtags. So, uh, as Braham mentioned, we 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 should actually while well, fine fine tuning and training a model, it's it's better uh, to use uh, supervised learning. Uh, yeah, just make sure you uh, you use that that approach, but also make sure you are not uh, making your model to overfit because in in the data set that hasn't been, uh, for example, where you are trying it on a data set that it hasn't been try, trained up for, it will uh, actually start. Uh, it will start making nonsense uh, responses or nonsense outputs. So you should make sure you to consider that. And yeah, after that, we just uh, need the hashtags part and the text part from our clean data set. So we just uh, uh, extract those those columns. And after that, uh, we uh, we prepare the data set. Uh, we actually need to clean since we have uh, <coughs> some so it's actually converted to a string while we are cleaning and in the cleaning script there is uh, extracting a hashtag and after that, after extracting the hashtag uh, we are we, we are converting the list into a string so when when uh, when we are actually reading it it's a string so we have to three process for that and yeah we just uh, uh, for, so if it, if this name uh, if we our record or our control is this one, uh, it, it, it has a hashtag with a value of an empty array. That means we don't have any hashtag. So you just uh, can drop or consider all the rows having a hashtag. So after that, we as you can see here, and we will actually try to solve these issues having a hashtag, hashtags uh, with a space. So. We should actually uh, followed by uh, if hashtag is followed by space then by word, and we concatenate those, and we will actually get uh, extract the hashtag. So we use the uh, regex expression to actually check for a space and after the string. We actually then can concatenate it, and after that we can actually see the spy is and we can spy. Yeah. So with that we can prepare our data set. So after that, we copy and create a data set using the data set from deep. So there is two ways to load the data set in again face. Oh, okay, Mickey, let's go. Yeah, so it was a mistake, I think. Uh, okay, uh, Rudolf? Yeah, please. Uh, I you are going very fast and uh, i just want to make sure that i'm following you mm -hmm. okay uh, so far you, okay. the, you you import you import the you first of all you import the the clean data and after yeah. after importing the clean data you you remove uh, the the rows where we have a uh, uh, empty empty uh, hashtag when where the list is empty you remove those rows and after that, you add a hashtag to each at the beginning of uh, uh, the content of hashtag. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, what about the uh, the, the the labels uh, in your in your clean data? There is no label yet. What label? Add or not add? Mm -hmm. Hello, Nati. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I'm asking be... about the. 
Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm asking about the level of your clean data. Oh, okay. yeah, so what you mean by label? Like, what are you looking for? Okay, uh, it should be the, the, the target in our data set, all right? Uh, what, what kind of targets are, are you are you saying like uh, the ad or not ad or part like categories of an ad yes 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 ah, oh, okay for this tutorial i'm just demonstrating how to extract a hashtag from a given text so i'm fine-tuning llama for that and for your case while after collecting all the data and labeling all the data, you can move, or you, you can come back here and change the hashtag to another labeled part. And you, you fine tune it in a way that it understands the labeling and uh, the, the classification. I'm just uh, doing a, a simple extraction here. Okay, good, good. Maybe I, I, I will ask more questions about the labeling later. So we can continue, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, after that, the, as I've uh, mentioned before, we have two types. Of, we have uh, plenty of ways to call, to load the data set for using the data sets uh, library. One of, uh, one of the popular one is load data set and the other is data set. So we can use both uh, to load uh, from local file. So if we don't have a data card on, <laughs> or our, we haven't published our data set in to heading phase, we can actually use load it locally. So after creating the dictionary, having the text and uh, the hashtags, we can create that from dict uh, by apply by using the function from dict and the our data set will be created. So and after that, uh, yeah, we can just uh, here we can see the, the result of our first data set and we can check uh, how it looks like. So we have the text uh, the text here and also we can check the data, data set sub, sub test is just for uh, a test, the test purpose. As you can see, we actually split it into uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, we consider we used uh, for training uh, around eighteen thousand data and the remaining uh, data for uh, testing purposes. So data set subset represents the test data set and the data set represents the training data set. So we can see here the, the they are actually different since we are actually seeing a different uh, data set. So after that we, there is uh, you can use this kind of tokenizer, but it won't be effective. It's always better to uh, use the models tokenizer. So we are using Llama, so we have to, uh, it's better if we use the Llama version, the tokenizer from Llama, since it will not understand the, uh, the, this one will create a different uh, tokenization list other than the model knows or the model is familiar with, especially in the embedding case. So we, ha we have to actually expand the embedding and also modify or fine tune the tokenizer by itself or use it if it understands Amharic. Uh, it, it, they might not understand Amharic well, since uh, they don't have uh, the, the, that uh, understanding of the Amharic tokenizer, but we can actually try it uh, since we are actually doing a basic extraction. Ah, okay, go on, go on. Okay, can we use the Gary one? Uh, for th this part as a step uh, the embedding might be different so in that case you you might not uh, get the results you are expecting so that so that there is a reason why hugging face actually saves the tokenizer also while you are saving the model you should also save the tokenizer right there is a reason oh okay so you can't actually read the mixed Yes, uh, I kind of a little bit uh, confused about the the path token. Um, just want you to explain by giving uh, a, a given example how it works. 
Oh, uh, okay. It will it will take a lot of time for training. As you can see, my runtime is already disconnected, and if I reconnect it, I will lose all the saved mod saved model instance and uh, the trained models. So it will take uh, quite a bit of time. That's why I, I actually pre-run the notebook before uh, I started the uh, I started the tutorial. But in this case, it's just uh, the, a simple space-based token means you are actually splitting. Uh, your data uh, using space and converting into a list. So, for example, if you have a certain sentence, you're just actually splitting it using space and uh, returning a list. That's what it is doing here. So, for example, if you have, a, uh, let's say, some similar texts that, that have uh, similar words, uh, you, you will get a different uh, tokenizer for each sentence because you are just splitting it, not uh, training any tokenizer. So by training any tokenizer means you, you find uh, any similarities that I see in this way, but you don't. So maybe just uh, Nati, you can show like in the GPT tokenizer that just the link that I sent. Uh, you can show like what what it means. If I understand Rudolf, what you are saying is you don't understand that token what token is, right? Now I do understand tokenization, but when we talk we talk about the part token, I don't know how the the uh, the part the part will be will be used in the tokenization. It will be something it's just, like it's, a, it's another token, just another token. A part is just another token. It's just in a vocabulary. It's a, a token. Let's call it now. In this case, we can call it part. We can call it. Rudolf, you know, we can call it anything, and then we can call that one to be a filler, so a token that fills. You know, in in when you are in pandas, when you are filling uh, empty nuns, what do you use? Yes. You can use zero, or you can use anything. It's just zero is yeah, another uh, number, right? It's the same. So it's pad is the same. It's just another token that we specially use to pad things. That has no meaning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go on, Alexander. And just to add on what Nabi said, let's say you have you are expecting uh, uh, you are expecting uh, a link that has uh, twelve and the input is eight, so the the rest four have to be padded. That's what for the part symbol represents. And yeah, Alexander, you can go. Okay. Thank you, Nati, for you. I interrupt you. What is the purpose of uh, present the hashtag column in the data after after you process? Oh, to find the, the hashtag column to find it uh, because you won't actually understand the pattern with the input text and the output. But if we represent it with the hashtag or the existing hashtags, it will have a better understanding of what to actually expect and how to extract a hashtag from a given text. Okay, I have understand the given text uh, pattern and how will the text message. So after that, why I remove the hashtag? Because it is not uh, tokenized for further processing. Mm -hmm. Does it need to be I'm not understanding your question? Okay. The, after you pre process your data or uh, in extracting hashtags from the texts, okay. uh, you have selected a hashtag column uh, after you prepared the, your data. So, in my sense, when I extract hashtags from the old document and uh, then why I remove it? What purpose I need to present the hashtag column for parser processing after cleaning the data? Yeah, we, we are uh, still considering the hashtag column. Like, as you can see here, uh, I'm, I'm not really removing it. I'm just picking the, from the data set. I'm just actually choosing the text file. If I'm understanding the question correctly, I'm just selecting the text key. Yeah, selecting hashtags from the whole text is one your task, and 
prepare the hashtag as one column. Do you understand? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not getting the question. I'm really sorry. Like, the reason I'm just picking the text in the hashtags is because I, I need to use a supervised learning. I can't just give it any text out there and uh, give it an instruction to extract a hashtag. But while fine tuning, it might not understand it as we are so, uh, as we intended. And so because of that, we actually need to provide another column of the hashtag in, into our data set. So the model, while we are fine tuning, we can instruct it well, so it can actually extract uh, any hashtags if if the model actually encounters any any text that it hasn't been trained on okay good but my understanding is from the challenge document you should remove all the the hashtags that contained in the yeah, I, I think uh, what I he's trying to say Nati, uh, uh, sorry i think what he's missing inside the task or inside the the document challenge we've been asked to remove the hashtag but here yeah, we're yeah. trying to fine tune it yeah, that's right. then you already you're you're giving it so he's asking the purpose of removing an hashtag then again added it to the to to the fine tuning what is the purpose behind it from what i that's understand my question thank you uh, okay so uh, it's it's uh to actually make better the, the supervised learning to actually make it better so it will actually see the hashtags in the text and which is the output has some some marks so so, sorry. So for the next, uh, you're muted. for the next, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, there was a noise. Uh, so, so for while extracting for the day for uh, a text that it hasn't been trained on, it will actually know what patterns to actually look for. I just put this one to to increase the pattern and also to increase the supervised learning by just trying to avoid uh, yeah. an overfitting. So, so if that's the case, is there a reason why we need to remove it at the beginning of the, of the state? Like, uh, it's like, for, a, it's for so a maybe, maybe, maybe let me just, so I think the, the question is, so I haven't followed up what was here. So in the challenge document or the, the previous yeah. time that I described, we want to make it a bit challenging for the for the LLM to learn more about what patterns are, you know, what, you know, how to attribute, for example, what is a hashtag and not within within the text. Um, and and therefore it makes it a lot more, it's, it's creating a lot more challenge. If you left, oh, now hashtag versus hash is a, a two different thing. Every time I think I, I was talking, it's about the hash. Like in the hashtag, if you remove the hash, it makes it much harder because it will not just pick the hash as a you know a very simple anyone can pick up right any model then will pick up okay hashtag means anything with a hash so that that doesn't make it learn much if you remove the hash not the hashtag mm -hmm. if you remove the hash then it's it will struggle it will try to find a pattern through the process it will learn so now i think that there seems to be that two confusion hash versus hashtag thank so, you yeah so is that does that sort it out like the issue so here mm -hmm. what he yes. okay. it's the hash that we, we are saying remove not the hashtag thank you thank you okay yeah thank you. so in you while you're cleaning your data just uh, for remove while you re remove your hashtag just remove the hash part Uh, I'm sorry for the confusion. And yeah. Uh, so uh, after the tokenized uh, the, to the tokenization, we are not going to use the space-based one, but we we will use uh, Lama's uh, tokenizer, and uh, we load our model. So our, our model by using this function, and I'll show you uh, how this function is actually referenced. Uh, and yeah, we just uh, we are using the quantization Laura. So uh, we have, we apply the configuration tool. So we we will uh, pass the configuration as a parameter, and our device map and the maximum memory will depend on our number of GPUs for forty G for forty gigabytes. And yeah, and after that, 
we will uh, end of sentence token will be used as a uh, factor for our tokenizer. We are using uh, the tokenizer from uh, Lama, and yeah. So that we will create a prompt. So the, the most important part is to create a, a fine, uh, like an important and fine prompt. So we give it a, a, an intro blog and also an instruction. So the instruction will be to, to extract the hashtag from like while you're implementing this, I just do it for uh, for you guys. But while, while you're implementing it, make sure to remove uh, the hash symbol from the start of the hashtag in your actual text file, but make it uh, appear in the hashtags column. That would make them model as the evaluation to actually find the pattern more and use uh, a high number of epochs since you have uh, 24 gigs of RAM, I mean GPU. So yeah, make sure to consider that. And I will just, uh, we will just return. Uh, of our prompting of text and our updated text file. So as you can see here in the instruction key, we will uh, pass the, the text, uh, we will append the, our actual text and in the, in the response, we will uh, use the hashtags. So it will actually try to find the map. And yeah, and after that, uh, we will uh, use, uh, we'll create some helper functions to to pre-process the data and to get the max uh, positions while pre-processing the data set, since we are using our own data set. And yeah, we will we will remove the, those columns. And after that, we uh, we return, uh, we shuffle uh, using our seed here. Uh, the seed we just uh, as, as a parameter and uh, return the data set and after that we uh, we create as i've mentioned the load model function uh, accept a bit and byte uh, configuration and after that uh, we we create our configuration uh, this loading for by four bit is uh, is representing uh, what uh, the weights to be converted into four bit other than using the circuit to be since it will use a lot a lot of RAM, a lot of RAM, and yeah, after that, uh, we will create uh, our text config and we will, uh, we will mention, we will uh, provide all the task types. Since we are using uh, while loading our model, we are using, as you can see here, uh, we are using uh, auto model for causal LM, so we should uh, actually use the task type as causal LM to work for the parameter option tuning. And after that, we will we will uh, try to uh, create, other, let me show you here, we have another config to load uh, into 16 bit, uh, for uh, the binary float of 16. And after that, we are using this uh, function. Uh, let me show you this function, uh, find all linear models. And so if uh, those bits are four, uh, we just flip and I mean, we use the linear four bits one. Uh, if not, we will use the torch version. It's mm -hmm. just for uh, the while training, the training purpose. We don't have to worry about the spot and we will, uh, uh, so we will print here all the selected trainable models since we have, uh, we can't uh, fine tune all the llama weights and we can uh, use all the 7 billion uh, parameters so since we have to uh, pick a few so that's what F really means and after that we just uh, use hugging face and load lama's model and just need to log in using hugging face hub and after that you log in with your token and you uh, Load, you specify what models you want from again face and if you want to if you guys want to try uh, to give it a try in any other model you just can't change this this model name and after that you will see the difference so uh it, it will be a lot of like trial and errors in every model i, I i've been trying it on other models that llama has actually uh has uh, somehow uh 
scored uh, also gave us a better result. So yeah, and after that we create uh, our bit and byte config and we load our model into our uh, system. And after that it will actually fetch the model from hidden face. As you can see here, it's about uh, more than uh, 12 gigabytes. Uh, excluding the tokenizer and yeah after that we just will specify our seed and uh, this, this seed will be used for uh, randomizing uh, randomizing or shuffling our data set and after that uh, we get uh, our max links and as i mentioned before when we process pre-process our data set we need to provide a max length and after that uh, our data set will be um, will be pre-processed and yeah, after that we just have to run the train function and in our trainer we we can specify our maximum steps the maximum steps represents the the epochs or the the iterations we we, we use for training and after that uh, we we can uh, set our optimizer and also after we we can also set uh our learning rate and also floating right our floating point 16 is true or not and uh, our logging steps for uh, each of the epochs we want to log uh, the training loss and all and after that we just uh, call our uh, training function after we prepare uh, the parameters and after that, we can see here uh, for each training uh, how, how uh, it was progressing. And uh, as you can see, it, the loss goes, goes up and down uh, for a while. And after that, it keeps uh, decreasing. For, and uh, yeah, it will uh, it, it reaches to the point where it, it's about 0 0.8 in the 50s epoch. I just trained it for uh, 50 epochs. And after that, we just uh, save um, our, our checkpoint, uh, and after saving our checkpoint, let's say we are looking for uh, publishing this this to a hidden face character or a hidden face model card and data card. We just use a hidden face uh, package to do that, but we have to save our tokenizer first, and also have to save saving. Uh, we have we first some issue with saving the model, but after saving the model, we can load it and infect. But we, we can just infect from the trained model right now. And after that, we create a prompt for uh, the test. Uh, as you can see here, we actually commented out the response key. So the response key means we actually pointed out while training, we pointed out the, the hashtags or what to look for what to look for now we don't 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 consider that i mean as uh, we we don't use it in the instruction we just give it a text and we will see how it progress and after that if it's good okay so we actually try to omit uh, other characters and try to for example omitting the hash would be one step and the hash symbol and after that we will try to, uh, to check if it's if it's working well if it is we will um, try to make it better again yeah it's it's a it's a lot of trial and you you won't you won't find tune a perfect model in just one track so you have to actually tweak all the, the the prompts and also you have to tweak all your data sets or how to you how you prepare your data sets and after that you just uh, you just create our prompt for a test and you can see here our text is identifiers text from the given text of the given text is uh, is displayed as this one as you can see here it includes a hashtag but you can actually try and check without the hash the hash symbol and you can see here the answer is if but we are just giving it as an instruction as you can see here in the input text we are just giving it the text key I mean the value in the text key and for which is uh, identifies hashtags from the given text and after that we uh, our we encode our input using our tokenizer and uh, after that we just try to start our measure, measure our inference time and we uh, in fact using model to generate and uh, after that we decode our 
decode the, <coughs> the result from the model and we can actually check here. And you can actually check here where the text, the instruction provided or the input was uh, displayed as this. So Dr. Ali Ahmed and they will continue as, uh, to this text. And the output is, as you can see here, it added some, some other hashtags and the hashtag generated from the upper text will be hashtag itself. So this is this this was a result uh, trained on uh, eighteen thousand rows, and you well, what you guys can do here is take this notebook and I'll share this notebook uh, in the week seven uh, channel, and you can take this model and try to fine tune it by removing the hash symbol and also by uh, increasing the epochs and also by trying to run it in multiple GPUs. You, you can do a lot of trial and errors, and at, uh, at the end, we, it will progress somehow into an efficient fine-tuned model. So we can actually use give it a certain text that, that don't even have a hashtag, and it will generate uh, a variable hashtag for us. So that's the integral for this one. Uh, yeah, thank you, guys. <clears throat> so, uh, anybody has any question? Okay, uh, Abdullah, you can go. Okay, Nati. So, uh, what this model is currently doing is it takes in a uh, text and it generates a hashtag that, like, that has a, a some sort of um, some sort of relation with the with the text we provided. Like, is that what it's doing? Now, come again. Like, uh, your your voice was stopped okay. from the uh, Right. So, so what I'm asking is. Is the model uh, what the output from the model is? It's going to generate a hashtag based on the input that uh, we provide it. Is that like the output from the model? Is am I correct? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, while we are while we are fine tuning, we gave it a prompt to give the output. As uh, as you can see uh, in the hashtag Ethiopia part, it's just. Uh, hashtags it, it will say hashtags and it, uh, it, will, it will try to list all the hashtags uh, the model extracted from the above text and also it will try to actually uh, also gen try to generate another hashtags additional hashtags in the text as you can see here it's added it, it, it added another ethiopia in the int and uh, as you can see here in, in the same example but in a, in a different uh, in a different way it, it just uh, added Ethiopian and uh, Ethiopia, and also added another Dr. Rabi uh, 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 to the end of the string. And after that, it it tries to generate, uh, it tries to come up with a hashtag. But the best way to use or to fine tune this model would be to actually check by removing the hash symbols and, as I mentioned, and increase the epochs and also try to make the training time much faster by using the multi gpu and after that you will you will find yourself with a better more fine-tuned model and we will keep progressing on this one and also on the other more on the other models especially once we once we have a fine uh, a fine label data set we will actually try to find we will be worrying about how to prompt and fine-tune but for now let's just Try keep trying and uh, getting some results. Yeah. So, so what I understood is this model understands Amharic, and it tries to generate a um, a hashtag from the Amharic text we provide it. Something that relates to the text, right? Yeah. It's just uh, the fine tuning was. Uh, it's because of like we used uh, around eighteen thousand rows. Uh, you can't be sure. Like for example, if you uh, if you are trying to make it generate or uh, text, it might not 
uh, generate uh, a full uh, paragraph or a, a paragraph that makes sense. So since it, it doesn't actually understand the whole structure of Amharic. The Amharic has a very, Amharic has a very complex structure. So uh, it might not understand that part, but for this part, it might work. Uh, it will work as, as you fine tune it in, uh, in an efficient way by using an increased deep voice and also an LTG. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nashi. Okay. So I'm sorry, it's um, I'm going to take time from trainees. I'm going to ask a question or a couple of questions actually. Um, so uh, if you allow me, uh, so I have a question that might be stupid, but uh, why are we talking with the model in English when we're writing the prompt? We're using um, uh, the text is in Amharic, but the 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 destruction is in English. I mean, uh, okay, even. Uh... Uh, like sometimes the the prompt instructions the the models understand the English better than the other languages. So, for example, while we were trying uh, to label with GPT four, the English instructions, the English prompts, work better than the AMA. So this is just from trial and error, basically. Yeah, uh, just try and error. Like the more you, the more you, the more, you, the, more you, the more we try, the more we understand how the prompts should go. Okay. Good. And and the other thing, um, when you were, talk, were discussing like what to remove from the text, you told them to remove the hash, only the hash symbol, not the hash. Uh, I mean, this is for further fine tuning. It's the hash yeah. symbol, not the actual hashtag. But yeah. um, uh, let, yes. So my question is, I just want to understand. We are trying to, our goal is to make the model able to for a given text, create a hashtag, not exactly, not to extract the hashtag from the text. So like we're giving it, a, we want it to be able to what, like to get, to take a text about something and then generate itself some hashtag, right? Yeah, that, that's one way of trying it. So the first step it is to actually understand how it operates in given, uh, this prompt and this data, I mean, finding, fine tuning instruction. So we change our instruction in the next iteration by just removing the hash symbol. And after that, after we see the progress on that, we fine tune it in, a, in another approach by just, by also removing all the hashtags, including- oh, Yeah, that's text. okay. So there is a point where we, 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 we remove the whole hashtag. Yeah, we, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, okay. we, we, will, we will reach to that point since we need, the, we need it to generate not extract. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. That will make sense, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and and maybe just to add one thing, I think that this English Amharic, definitely, of course, the English prompt seems to work well for uh, different things, and even the most crazy. It's not crazy, but for labeling, for example, uh, GPT three point five Turbo, for example, doesn't work as much. It's cheaper, one order of magnitude cheaper. If we were to do, but every attempt we, we tried uh, to use that one, for example, doesn't work. And GPT-4 seems to be really well. And um, so those things are exactly finding, you know, it's it, that's why we when you don't know things, how things work, it's definitely better to experiment. And the more we are experimenting, the better it is. So in this case, maybe even we haven't probably attempted it, it might work even better if the instructions actually pose Amharic in English. Because most of, I think, maybe for um, and it's not, like the actually, you have to know about in Amharic when we write, it really is, we mix English a lot um, in many texts. Because sometimes it's easier, you know, for people to write just in English because it's, it's you know, and then uh, some other things we write in Amharic when the concept, so maybe that's the case. Maybe we don't know, but it maybe is that that even trying, you know, Amharic English mix and maybe training something that actually just you know converts like you give it an Amharic or an English and and it identity it writes a good instruction that is more suited to generate. So that's basically the prompt engineering part. We uh, the prompt generation part that people did last week uh, may come here as well. That may improve also a lot. So, but that that is the nuisance and uh, you know experiment that 
that we need. Uh, yeah, so my question was basically how it was based to like, was it a trial and error or was it like there was some kind of um, uh, a reason for, for doing this? But yeah, it makes sense that you tried actually. Well, uh, uh, or you yeah. can try, yeah. And even we haven't tried, but we should try a mix. And maybe you right. know, it's like that, that might even improve it better because it, it's, it's all about the data that it has seen in the relationships. So now it seems that it has related English to Amharic much better than Amharic to Amharic. Maybe. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, so that, uh, do you know about Lama too? Does it like does it have in its data set training Amharic in its, uh, is it one of the languages that was trained on or not? No, I think it's, uh, unless it is very clean, like, like some models that are very, very clean, deep clean for a particular language, almost all models that are trained by what is called the text globe or something. There is a one um, that was from the open internet that was extracted. And those languages, those models actually know everything. It's just the represent the average, the, you know, how much percentage, but they all have different languages. So maybe some of the tokens, um, the number of tokens, maybe when you compare the fraction, maybe it's like 1% or less than, less than 0 0.1%. We don't know that actual, but yes, all of them that they train on the open internet data, you know, they, they have Arabic, they have Amharic, they have everything. And Lama 2 is not that different. Okay. But the Lama 2, just the original, it, it is garb, like it doesn't output much Amharic better. So, so for example, Mistral actually performs a bit better than Lama 2 um, and things like that. But um, yeah, so. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm done with my questions. If uh, any of the trainees have more questions. Okay, otherwise, I suppose like uh, we can end this session, right? Um, exactly, we can end the now, session and those people... Yeah, Babal, do you have people, anything else? Or yeah, no, I think let's stop this I'm session. Not hearing right? what can, you, can, can you hear me? Okay, so uh, let's stop this session and then Lillian and Fanuel and others who have an issue in connecting, let's stay and uh, let's fix it. The rest, we can go. If you don't have any issue, yeah. great. And anyone, Pascaline or anyone, please stop the recording if you can. Okay. Uh, is there anyone from Ten Academy team who can stop the recording? Okay. Thank you. 